So the food component, just the inflammatory nature of that food, I think is also going to be a big one. Um, like you mentioned, um, I would say next mold toxins. I know mold, uh, can do different things, whether it's, you know, we kind of talked about it as kind of being a, a bug thing, which I guess it could be connected, but the problem is you may live in a moldy home. You may have things in your environment, whether maybe it's too humid, right? And there may be a different solution for that than fixing out your bugs, fix, clearing out the bugs in your tummy. So we may have to go about that a different way. So I guess the mold kind of connects with the bugs, but there's also a different solution to it. So we'll put mold as a separate entity on that list. And that could be just too humid of a home. It could be a leak in the home that was never fully remediated properly. Um, it could be lack of good quality air filtration. All of those things could could play out. And of course, mold also is a sympathetic nervous system stressor as well. Definitely. And they're two different categories because you can have two different situations. You could be colonized for mold, meaning you're growing in your gut and sinuses, or you could just be a mycotoxin reservoir. And some people are lucky enough to where maybe their immune system was able to not allow the colonization, or maybe the exposure of the mold was not too long-term. Therefore, they're just a reservoir of mycotoxins, but they're not growing it. That's a better situation. It makes our job easier if that is a situation. And yeah, for sure. I mean, mycotoxins for me, it definitely affected my gut, my brain, my stool consistency. So binders really help. So if you are having bloating, but you're having more IBS type symptoms, you know, of course, bringing in the binders, we've done podcasts on that is going to be the next step. Let's go back to hormones for a minute. Cause yeah, I would consider you one of the best experts in hormones. And you've taught me a lot over the years about hormones. And I know that PMS for a lot of women, PMS is a big deal. And not only is it mood changes, but it's bloating. So can you fill us in there? What's the hormone connection outside of cortisol to bloating? Yeah. So I would say out of the gates, um, low thyroid has a strong connection with affecting motility. So one of the side effects of low thyroid hormone obviously can be the conventional hair loss, uh, cold hands, cold, cold feet, eyebrow thinning of the outer third, maybe mood issues, maybe irritability. And, and obviously some of that overlaps with adrenal and female hormones and male hormones, but th low thyroid also affects motility. And so low thyroid hormone could easily affect motility. And if we slow down that motility, that could easily allow more time for those foods to ferment, you know, kind of create that food baby, if you will, just put more bulk in your tummy and just make you feel a little bit more bloated and distended. So it's very possible that thyroid could be playing a role in the whole situation. Okay. Well, we talked about thyroid and 90% of hypothyroid cases are Hashimoto's. So, I mean, we could just say Hashimoto's could be a cause. It's a roundabout way. It's a long, it's a long route to get from Hashimoto's to bloating, but it does make sense. Yep, exactly. Um, so yeah, at this stage of the game, female hormones can plug in. Like if you have estrogen dominance, right? Lower progesterone, higher estrogen, um, relatively speaking, and or just lower hormones that can create potential things that could affect motility via stress, via sleep. And then if those things are compounded, that can create more adrenal stress. So you can kind of like, you know, it's kind of like the six degrees of bloating, right? It may not be a direct, direct indication, but it could easily kind of dovetail two or three, you know, ways in and, and hit a couple of these different factors if that make sense. So yeah. I would say some of the female hormones, um, obviously some of the cortisol and adrenaline. And of course, the big one that we're hitting now is the thyroid, the low thyroid hormone. Yep. 